It's 10 o'clock Mountain Time. It's Thursday, January 28th, 2021. Uh, welcome to Tom and Shane, No Business in Politics. Uh, happy to be here with you guys. We are here, uh, believe it or not, uh, gosh, we're here every Tuesday and Thursday. And we'll and Saturday. <laughs> yeah, and Saturday on radio. And we'll take uh, a business topic every Tuesday and Thursday and try to uh, explain it to you, help uh, your small business succeed or your startup or whatever you have. And our political shows are on Saturday on radio, 8 to 11. You can listen anywhere in the world. Uh, just click listen now on KMMSAM.com. And you don't have to sign up or anything. You don't have to leave any personal information. All you have to do is click listen now and listen. And if you missed any of our past shows or past uh, business topics, by all means, uh, you can catch up, uh, watch, or listen to our past shows at KMMSAM.com. Just click on Tom and Shane's podcast, and uh, you will get the uh, whole deal over there. Also, uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, of course, uh, we would love it if you would subscribe. Uh, let me get rid of that. We would love it if you would subscribe and uh, ring the little notification bell. Uh, once you subscribe, you'll be uh, notified whenever we have a podcast. Um, and uh, like us, uh, Facebook likes that kind of stuff. You know, if you comment and like us, they uh, say, oh, these guys are getting some attention. So maybe we should put them up more often and let more people know about them. So that's why we do that. Also, uh, we are also on Patreon, and if you're not sure what that is, that means that you can monetarily support us. Uh, you can uh, give us uh, money and uh, to offset some of the uh, massive costs we have to put this on. <laughs> right, Shane? <laughs> so, yes, indeed. Of course, uh, we have various uh, levels of uh, contribution, and uh, you know, if you contrib uh, contribute uh, more, uh, you get private stuff from us, private uh, help, private uh, all kinds of things. And uh, so uh, why not take advantage of that? And we'll put the, descri or the uh, link to uh, our Patreon site in the description below, and uh, you can uh, decide whether you want to uh, do that or not. We'd appreciate it if you would. So. Welcome, Shane. Shane Tobin, half man, half amazing in Vancouver, British Columbia, my co-host of many years. Happy to have him along with us, of course. So thanks for being here, man. My pleasure. Today's a great, a great story about sales training, uh, both your staff and your own understanding of why customers buy. So let's get to it. Yeah, we're going to get uh, we're going to rock and roll right into this. Yeah, we want to we want to talk about that. Uh, a lot of people, when they first start a business, they tend to think in, uh, in terms of sales by themselves and they don't really get a, a feel for uh, how customers think, why they operate, why they do the uh, why they do the things they do. And um, our first thing that we want to talk about, we've got what is called the psychology of the buyer, the psychology, I guess I should say. And we've got a quote uh, by, uh, by Abraham Maslow. And the quote says, uh, the human being is a wanting animal and rarely reaches a state of complete satisfaction, except for a short time. As one desire is satisfied, another pops up to take its place. When this is satisfied, still another comes into the foreground and so on. It's a characteristic of human beings throughout their whole lives that they're practically always desiring a something. And that's that's pretty true, isn't it, Shane, that we all want something. That's right. And, you know, we've been adapted over the last 70 years as a consuming nation. And uh, that's principally because of marketing. That's why we talked about your uh, marketing plan and how important it is, not mm -hmm. only for networking uh, through your community to develop uh, new clients or new customers, but also to analyze uh, the uh, product that you're providing to that, to that customer base. Mm -hmm. That's right. Well, there are some reasons that people buy and um, we'll show those to you for just a second.
want uh, that to happen. So uh, um, all of these things have one thing in common, Shane. People spend money. Well, yeah, that's it. (laughs) But every one of the ones that we just mentioned are emotions, except for maybe self-preservation. That's pretty much uh, everything else that we mentioned there in all of those um, uh, choices is a feeling of how the product or service or whatever you provide uh, makes the customer feel. And uh, that's the basis of what we need to really concentrate on today. And that is uh, emotion versus logic. And um, that's right. And the, the biggest consumer are women. And that's generally because women are emotional. And uh, they also, uh, uh, they're dramatic. And uh, so they're always conscious about uh, their appearance and and so forth, things of which we'll go through. Men, on the other hand, they think about two things, food and the physical man. So they're they're not as inclined to to spend. And it's it's a fascinating reality when you look at marketing. So much has been written about marketing because of the uh, we see it every day um, through our entire lives, whether it's on, on the social networking, the advertising, or on television. The you know the the the, uh, the marketing, uh, just going outside your door, going anywhere, you're always confronted with uh, um, inquiring minds of of store owners trying to c- come up with good reason for you to purchase their product. Yeah, that's it. Well, yeah. <clears throat> And, um, you know, Frito-Lay did a study uh, way back when that uh, customers could tell the difference uh, of an 8,000th uh, thickness of a chip. And customers like a chip that broke under four pounds of pressure. I mean, this is the kind of things that customers or that uh, businesses do to try to <laughs> try to figure out what the heck a customer uh, customer wants. That's uh, right. To give you another great example is Hunt's uh, Ketchup. Uh, 50 yeah. years ago, they got the federal government and uh, the federal, uh, the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, to develop a specific thickness for ketchup and a specific ability of that ketchup to uh, pour down a 45-degree um, p- piece of, of wood. And it was obviously meant to uh, secure their, you know, their place in that market. But at the same time, people followed up on the guidelines set up by the FDA for your thickness and runniness of ketchup. So it, right. you have government involved in this. You have business involved in this. Everybody wants to provide for you. I'll tell you, you, you tilt that bottle. You can't have it come slushing out. You know, it's got to right. it's got to come out at right. The right consistency. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> But yeah, one of my uh, one of my two rules of advertising. Uh, the first one is uh, you never advertise anywhere unless there's at least a seventy five percent expectation that the advertising is going to pr- produce more than it costs you to advertise. And the other one is that uh, when emotion and logic come in conflict, emotion always wins. So, if you think people are going to look at your product logically and make a logical decision. Uh, that's not going to happen. That's it's right. And, and and another two rules about uh, um, uh, marketing and uh, determining your product's uh, saleability is uh, the effect it has on people's general income or their disposable income. Uh, there, are, you know, There's a big difference. One is personal and for your, the benefit of your family and the lifestyle you want to maintain. And the other one, the... Uh, Disposable income is the balance left over at the end of the month that allows you to go out and buy things that you may need or just want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you need and that disposable income to go out and really consume. That's true. Yeah. Well, it, it gets down into that feeling. Um, you know, uh, we all have feelings of um, things we want and things we need. We've talked about this a lot on the show, Shane, right. the difference it's between important. want and need. Uh, you know, if the car breaks down, well, you need a car. You need to fix that car to get to work or wherever you have to go. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you want a new car, well, that's kind of a want. You may, the, the other car is running fine, but you just want a new car. You know, you want the smell and the, you know, <laughs> the newness of it. Uh, that's but, right. And in, in, in a new company, if, if, you, if you decide that 
your product is going to be a service. In some ways, there's less cost to that, depending on the type of service, of course. I mean, if, if you're going to provide service to uh, do somebody's yard or or clean up and, and do gardening, you know, obviously you, you need equipment. But in if you're going to do a, provide a service that can be easily done over the Internet and by contacting people, um, even as a uh, third party salesman for a product, it, it's, it's not an, it is not as expensive. Now, if you have a product, wow, now you're talking about infrastructure, you're talking about inventory and, and uh, the need to be able to protect it, particularly if it has proprietary rights and where you're going to manufacture it to keep it safe from the hands of people that will copy it and try to out um, outdo uh, uh, your market or create a market before you can. Yeah, absolutely right. So, well, the other thing too, that I, I learned when I first started doing websites and I started, uh, you know, when I did my first website on business, I thought, well, okay, this will be an American website. Well, it wasn't too long till I discovered that it wasn't, it's a world, it became a worldwide website. Uh, I was published in China, uh, the UK, India, uh, a lot of my articles that were from the website, people picked up all over the world and put them in magazines and whatever. And um, the even though we're different culturally, uh, the exchange of goods and services is pretty much still based on want and need. You know, which, uh, yeah, which is you know basic economics uh, one point one. You know, yeah. you have to have commerce to be able to provide um, products or services and. Mm -hmm. uh, Boy, in a hundred years, we have really made this baby work. Amen to that. Isn't that, isn't that the truth? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, that's that's uh, yeah. The uh, that that was one of the things that really surprised me. We got like seventy countries, I think, came to the website and commented in the in a, a guest book we had and all of that, and and uh, it was just really amazing that um, you know with all our with all our differences, with all all of our dislikes for each other, our cultural differences, religious differences, political differences, whatever. Uh, we still fork over a buck for something we want you know, or need. And as we've covered, uh, net, you know, networking plays a large role in this. There are ways that you can uh, market your product and, or service. Um, and networking has a lot of uh, angles to it, which you'll see as we go through these different aspects of emotion with regards mm -hmm. to buying how important networking is um, that's why business cards are important and and meeting people and providing opportunities for people to come to your store if you have one or your site with yeah. um, opportunities that uh, save them money or they gain a benefit because they do something that's for sure yeah well, another thing we got to talk about is the customer self-image. We all have uh, we all have three images. Uh, we have the real us. Uh, this is the one <laughs> we present ourselves to us. Almost no one sees this one because uh, uh, that's our private image. Uh, we uh, have a second image: uh, how we would like to be seen or be uh, in an ideal world. We'd be thinner, taller, better looking, whatever. And uh, three is how we believe others see us. Uh, perhaps a more correct way of saying it, uh, it's only a matter of time until they find out I'm not qualified to do this job. <laughs> That's what Biden must be thinking. <laughs> well, and, and it's, it's a fascinating reality. Um, one of the biggest giggles I get is friends sometimes send me a picture of uh, people and how they dress going to Walmart. And, you know, the first thing a person oh, yeah. sees in some of these pictures, you look at and you go, Really? You left the house looking like that? On the other yeah. hand, people will, you know, uh, dress to the tens, as they say. Uh, if you're a white collared person, you get up, you shower, you shave, you dress and you go off or you get up, you shower, you put on your makeup and get dressed and go off. Or you get up and go to work in the same clothes you wore yesterday and you come home and shower. So people that work in in a, 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 an office tend to have a, a look that they have or are required. Where if you uh, work, in, you know, outside and, and you work in, in areas of, of construction or other areas of in warehouse work, and you don't tend to really care much about how you look. You just want to be there on time and, and make sure you get your job done and you wear clothes that are comfortable for you. Very true. Yeah, we, we do. Uh, 
Well, uh, you know, there's other things too, and this is something I've always stressed to business owners um, and and employees too. Um, address is really important because, you know, even if you're an employee of a company, you're still kind of representing that company when you're off work. That's correct. You know? So you don't need to well, you don't need to look like a bum uh, while you're you know roaming around town. Uh, because you may run into customers that you've had before and, you know, you're dressed at work, but you're, you know, you look like a slob at, <laughs> I mean, you don't have to, you don't know. That doesn't mean you got to wear a suit and tie everywhere you go, but, but if you're wearing jeans they're clean jeans, you know, if you're wearing a shirt, it's a clean shirt, you know? Um, That's right. And, and Bill Gates changed that whole concept, you know, uh, 30 years ago when he started coming to work in a golf shirt and khakis and mm -hmm. uh, boy, that market took off like crazy, but I'll give you another market that gives you some context to this. And that's the makeup industry. Wow. Women in the United States, just the United States spend over $6 billion a year on makeup and how it makes you know, them feel number mm -hmm. one, emotionally, yeah. but as we say the, how they make them look men now have crossed the $2 billion line because they're finding there are makeup products to moisturize their skin and their face. And uh, it, it, they find it comforting and they find that it uh, makes them look better, makes them look young. So mm -hmm. products are important, how they're sold, to, to whom they're sold and for why mm -hmm. are very big uh, things that you need to look at. That's why self-improvement is a big, big aspect of your product sales, uh, depending of course, what the product is or service you provide. Right, yeah. Well, uh, the other thing we need to talk about is uh, buyers don't look at reality when making a decision, and uh, nothing proves that more than the Coke test. And if you remember back in the 1980s, uh, Coke uh, decided to change their formula to make it a little sweeter <laughs> to uh, uh, compete with Pepsi. Uh, they thought they changed the formula, so they decided to come out with new Coke. And the biggest mistake they made, they've changed the formula before, but... In this case, they let us know they were changing the formula. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, they brought out new Coke. And, uh, of course, as we know, it was a dismal failure. Well, you're probably smoking. smoking. <laughs> you're probably drinking new Coke today. <laughs> I guess you can smoke Coke too, but <laughs> that's for another that's for another broadcast, I guess. And it's really quite fascinating in that example because of two reasons. One, um, they did this with the idea of thinking it would be healthier. So they replaced sugar with a, a chemical sugar. I won't mention the name. And it, it the, the problem was it actually changed the flavor of the Coke so significantly that people just didn't like it. But it gave Pepsi an in. And you remember when this happened uh, they during the, the, the Cola Wars, Pepsi would have a taste contest where people... Mm -hmm. They would have, you know, people try the, you know, an unknown version of both in which they liked. And of course, it turned out for their ad that everyone picked pay, everyone picked Pepsi. It didn't help Coke. And it's it's not just the regret they have and the money they spent doing it, but they really gave a hand up to Pepsi. And Pepsi's never lost that second place. It's a strong second place because of the marketing failure um, on the part of Coke. Mm-hmm. Well, back in uh, back in the day, again, uh, uh, the uh, the Coke formula, uh, sixty thousand people a day called Coke, <laughs> telling them, "Don't change our Coke." You know, I don't want to. We don't want to change the Coke. So, so that didn't convince the owners of uh, Coke enough. So they decided to do exactly what you talked about doing, Shane. Is they did two hundred and fifty thousand taste tests. <laughs> across the U.S. Uh, between New Coke, Pepsi, and Old Coke. And the winner, hands down, was New Coke. New Coke won every taste test they had. People loved it. and But when the sales came in, they wouldn't buy it. That's right. <laughs> Old yes. Coke was the seller. Because yeah. even and I had, I had Old Guard friends literally buy flats of, you know, the small bottle uh, Cokes because they like mm -hmm. the rock Coke. And and I, I I guarantee you right now, even today, if you go to the store and can find a, a, a bottle of, of Coke in a glass and a can of Coke and you drink them, you know, refrigerate, cool, and 
drink them, you'll find an incredibly difference in taste. There, there, it really is. It's, it's even to even to this day, it still tastes different if you drink it from a bottle as opposed to a can. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a story way back when uh, you got to be really old to remember this, but Coke <laughs> used to come in these little glass bottles, right? You know, they were what six ounces, eight ounces, something like that. They do that. now. I can get them here. I, I buy them. Well, I, yeah. But yeah. I mean, back in the day when all soda came in glass. That's right. Uh, they all came in yeah, glass. they had a they and the design, the design of the bottle was very I, I, I you know I, I, miss, I miss that 15 cent reach in cooler remember as a kid yeah you drop in a nickel and you'd have to grab the top of the bottle and move it down the rack you know right. to get yeah, pull to it, get out. it out yeah because you know they'd have four or five different coke products you know that i can't I, I don't remember specifically orange drink and a ginger ale and different types yeah. of choices but i i i missed that boy i guess i, I just remember running down to the corner grocery store at Polly drive and, and Beth drive. And then, you know, drop a nickel in and get a Coke out boy in the hot summer day. That was just the best. That was the best. <laughs> well, anyway, back in the day when Coke had these 6,000 or six ounce bottles or eight ounce or whatever they were, uh, the small ones, uh, six and a half million vending machines running around. So Pepsi, yeah. now, Pepsi says, Hey, Let's come out with a 12 ounce for the same price <laughs> as the Coke. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and Coke's and, in there saying, wait a minute, we got all these vending machines. We got all these bottles. What the hell are we going to do now? And, and you wonder about that, too, because it's really remarkable because the vending machines are gone. And and you wonder where they went. Of course, they went yeah. to the junkyard or got chewed up or you know recycled. But, wow, when you and I in the 60s and 70s, baby, I mean, there wasn't a corner... It didn't have two things. They it didn't either had a a, a, fo a phone, right, <laughs> or or it oh, had yeah. some, or it had some kind of dispensing machine. <laughs> like it, yeah, <laughs> so many things have changed so fast. Oh yeah, no, that's that's for sure. <laughs> they really have. Now we're really living back in the day right now. But the thing that most of these people don't realize is that marketing a lot of uh, a lot of successful marketing is based on things that failed in the past. You know, the mm -hmm. Arch Deluxe uh, hamburger from uh, mm -hmm. where McDonald's tried to corner some kind of adult market, and it wasn't their market. It's not their market, you know. That's so correct. came out with the Arch Deluxe and the, I don't know, whatever it was, the McDLT. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least Ronald McDonald isn't around anymore. Oh, my God. Clowns scared <laughs> me as a true. kid get to that guy. Well, I'll tell you, that Burger King uh king uh sure is scary creepy he, he was creepy, creepy. Isn't he? Uh, but i love I, I love the burger king crown you got on your birthday remember that that was fun well, yeah 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 you go on a birthday and they give you those little uh, uh paper crown to put on yeah, yeah. that was great you were king for a day king for a day those <laughs> those were the days All they right. were indeed <laughs> Well, uh, wrapping up here, uh, starting to wrap up anyway, uh, the decision-making process, of course. Um, um, you know, it, there, there are tons of proof of, of what we're talking about here that, uh, uh, you know, a lot of these CEOs and everybody sit around thinking that people are going to buy stuff logically, and uh, they just don't. Uh, uh, you know, and they don't buy on price either. Uh, Tide's been the top selling laundry detergent since it came out. And even though there's cheaper generic store brands, uh, Tide still is the top seller in laundry detergents because people just, you know, they just, they want to, they want the best and they think that's the best. They've been trained that's the best. And that's, that's why it uh, continues to stay up there. Most of the uh, Procter & Gamble brands uh, are up there, you know. So uh, once you can make that name for yourself, and we'll, we're going to talk about positioning in a future broadcast, but once you can, once you get that in the customer's mind, you know, uh, you wouldn't buy, you wouldn't buy Pennzoil cake mix or Buick cat food or Betty Crocker tires, you know, I mean, those, <laughs> hey. those, don't, those don't fit. You know, I mean, they're 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 comical when you think about it because they just don't fit because we've we've been buried in our minds of what a product is, and uh, just like the old Coke, uh, you can give us new Coke, we we like it, but we're not going to buy it. 
You know, That's right. Just, this doctor, he came up with six very fascinating um, observations. Security, self-preservation, convenience, yeah. avoidance of worry, recognition from others, and self-improvement. And, yeah. you know, these are all what I call the I factors. It's all about, right. I mean, you know, me, my, and I. And uh, we live this our life because when you make a purchase or uh, are deciding to, it's always, like Tom said, personal. It, it, it just comes out that way. And um, all these emotions that he covered are quite, uh, they're not unique, but uh, they're just self-preservation, basically, when you look at it. And uh, man, it's taken a long time <laughs> to get where we are, where we could simply decide on, oh, do I go buy milk and eggs today? Or oh, maybe I'll go tomorrow. But, you know, all these things are so important to that decision of why someone will buy your product or service. How true. Yeah. Well, um, um, I sold, uh, furniture for eight years, Shane, uh, retail <laughs> store, mom and pop store. And, and at least once out of all those eight years, each year, I would lose a sale on a mattress and a box spring. And do you know why I lost that sale? Uh, it wasn't big enough the, you know, the person, no. you know, found it wasn't big enough for them. <laughs> I know. I, I have no idea. The reason I lost those sales was that the cover on the mattress would not go with the room. Which of course makes no sense at all to me because you cover it with bed sheets and blankets and no one sees the bed sheet or the, you know, the, the, the color of your mattress or whether it matches the room. So, and <laughs> I also discovered that if you haven't been married very long, <laughs> the husband would say, honey, it's covered 90% of the time. That's and right. if you've been married, if you've been married for several years, it would be, thanks, Tom. We'll see. We'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> and they're yeah, gone. We'll, we'll about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nowadays, of course, everybody would jump on the bed and take a selfie. That's what they would do. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the thing. Yeah. So. yeah yeah, but you don't have these colorful motifs anymore on uh, any of these things like, uh, you know, like you had before. No. Yeah. Uh, Linda says, uh, I took a uh, took a, a class in marketing and learned the colors of products matter to customers. Is this correct? And you would be right. Uh, absolutely right. Because um, if you'll notice, Wendy's, uh, McDonald's, and Burger King all have red and yellow, buying colors, red and yellow. That's are right. The, uh, those are the colors, uh, yes, that attract you. Uh, one of the things uh, you'll notice on our YouTube channel is a lot of our topics are uh, in green uh, because studies show more people uh, are attracted to green titles than red titles, and there's so much red that they gloss over it. But when you see green or an unusual color or yellow, uh, sometimes that will um, grab uh, someone's attention if they're looking at a whole bunch of YouTube things. So yeah, yeah that right. red and, and yellow or red and gold are primary colors. And, yeah. and of course we're conditioned to understand red to mean stop and mm -hmm. gold always or yellow always represents wealth. So, you know, these are colors that are naturally uh, advanced in marketing as a tool mm -hmm. to, to, to sell people to stop and spend. And it's important aspect, again, with a small business, the colors that you make uh, and or determine for your business is, are, is, they're very important. They really are. Yeah. Well, the takeaway today um, is that you need to look at your products or your services and you need, you need to find the emotional hook for those. Uh, it isn't, uh, you know, you can stand there all day and says this product has feature, 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 feature. But if those features aren't benefits, then it doesn't matter how many features you can point out to somebody. So if you're going to say a product has this feature, think to yourself what that means to you is here's the benefit of that feature. You know, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do that. Um, um, you know, make sure that. See if you can tie an emotional uh, hook to uh, each product or service that you uh, provide to customers and use that. And when you're talking to a customer, you're going to bring those things up. 
Uh, is uh, XYZ important to you? Is ABC important to you? Is DEF important to you? Okay, if, if it is, then here's the product because you told me these are the things that you want or need. This product has those things. And that's, that's great. And, and it's so poor, important that we, we've talked about the need to really analyze uh, the name of your product or service. And the, the emotional, the other side of the emotional hook, of course, is that it is like, um, is it branded in a way that we grew up with like television advertising and jingles? Oh, my goodness. The jingles I remember still as a child oh, yeah. from hearing sure. it over and over. Repetitive marketing is always a positive thing regarding your effort to have people want to either engage or look at or consume your service or product. So marketing um, is important, but it's, it's that emotional hook. It's that motto. So you, aside from a name, you really need to come up with a very unique motto that you can use both on your business card and your window advertising or flyer advertising or whatever advertising you need as a small businessman in a local community. You know, it's quite fascinating. Chinese restaurants are a good example. Everybody has their favorite Chinese restaurant. And the emotional hook is the flavor, the food, because mm -hmm. it, 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 they get used to one Chinese restaurant, they go to another one and, and it doesn't taste good. But one of the fascinating things about all Chinese restaurants is their, you know, their, you know, legal piece of paper that they fill on both sides with a menu. You know, it's so fascinating to think, you know, that, you know, you, you look at a Chinese menu, particularly for takeout or, or delivery, and there's like 60 dinners or meals or choices on it. So choice is, is a big thing as well. And choice helps to make that emotion get excited with decision. Yeah. Well, the other thing too, when you're selling things, um, there is a comparison. You have a camera, somebody else has a camera. So your, your customer may be weighing back and forth on, on cameras uh, and the price of them. Well, if you can, if you can uh, create a package deal, a camera, a carry case, a tripod for a certain price, it's much harder for mm -hmm. your competitor to compare that price. And, um, you know, generally uh, those things are going to be needed anyway. So you have a better chance of making the uh, making the sale from that as well. Yeah, it's a great example. You know, in the last quarter of last year with an uh, epidemic, you know, um, Apple announced they sold one hundred and sixteen billion dollars worth of product. This is a company that's like, you know, the, the Apple phone's been around 15 years, 15 years. But look at the industries it's wiped out. It wiped out. A multi-billion global industry called film and cameras. So, you know, you think about the effect of a new product, it can have a serious, a, ma a massive impact. So don't ever give up on that thought, that hope, that desire to be able to uh, live to work and uh, find something that you can do on your own. It, it makes a big difference in your life and uh, you don't, walk around looking down at the ground you walk around looking at the sky wanting to come up with new ideas to enhance the sales of your product or service that's why we're here to help you do that that's for sure all right well that's uh that's pretty well going to wrap us up today uh let me leave you with uh this uh a uh, final thought here and then we'll come back and say goodbye if you're new to our youtube channel be sure to hit the subscribe button below the video click the notification bell so you'll never miss another podcast like us and leave a comment tom and shane are now on patreon you can become a supporter of the show for as little as three dollars per month or if you go higher there are some special perks only available to you your help keeps these small business podcasts coming you'll find this patreon link in the description below thanks for your support thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next small business podcast all right uh don't forget our political shows are every saturday 8 to 11 mountain time click listen now at kmmsam.com of course we're here every tuesday and every thursday at 10 o'clock mountain time uh to uh give you another business tip and things like that and if you missed any of our shows uh, all of our past shows are recorded and uh, they're at kmmsam.com just click on tom and chain's podcast and uh, you'll be taken over and uh, well taken care of there. So, all right. Uh, thanks for watching and listening. Say goodbye, Shane. 
I will. I want to thank everyone. Uh, making a donation to Patreon, by the way, or Patreon, isn't a requirement. And I say that because yeah. all of our shows are free. So don't think that you are required to pay. Yes, or record them or download them. Be happy, be safe, everyone. Live in the moment and live to work. Come home happy to your family. That's the way they want to see you when you come through that front door. Amen to that. All right, that's going to wrap it up for us. Uh, Linda says, uh, hey, thank you. Great information. Hey, we appreciate that, Linda, very much. And uh, we'll be back uh, next Tuesday with uh, something new. And uh, they're coming after Shane, I think. Uh, I hear the sirens out there. They are indeed. It's, it's coronavirus, baby. It's live. It's live. All right. <laughs> Sounds good. Hey, uh, thanks so much for watching. Uh, hey, don't forget, all views are welcome here. And if you think it there, there's a darn good chance we'll say it here. So we'll see everybody uh, Saturday on radio, 8 to 11, a mountain time, KMMSAM.com. Bye for now.